Mark, I'm so excited to have you uh, in this conversation uh, since we are now experiencing a very interesting time with what I would call this new information revolution. Uh, you coined the phrase uh, information revolution when you're at Stanford, and then you created the first design of the smartphone that we all use today. So first, I want to talk about your vision of what AI is going to bring mm. to information, to our connections, and the way we transact. I would love to start with those thoughts. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, hello, everyone. It's a, it's a real pleasure to be here and it's a real pleasure to be with my friend Rebecca. Um, so, yeah, so I've lived through um, at, at least five waves of the emergence of the information economy or the information age, information sector. And that's what the Stanford work was was all about, the economics of that. And, the, you know, the five the five are well known. I mean, so, you know, we invented uh, the semiconductor. That's, you know, that's silicon and that's Silicon Valley, from which came big computers and then came uh, little ones, personal computers. That was a huge change in civilization's course, the, the invention of those two computers, uh, formats. And then came telecommunications, particularly di digital, which connected the world to each other. Today, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's digital, cellular all the way, in which you can do magnificent things with. And then came this uh, this notion that that there's a small, intimate, amazing object that's you know that's with you all the time that you can't do without, and that's the mobile phone. And obviously, we were we were early on that. It was tremendous, uh, tremendous vision, tremendous people, you know, that, that brought it together. Those waves then created the infrastructure, so to speak, for for the web. Okay, so those are the five. Um, Gen Z were born into it, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, millennials. Felt it, you know, coming along and changing everything. AI has now come along on top of that. Now notice that in the history of technology and science, these things have to come in waves. They just don't come boop, out of the blue. So this one came out, and several people that I just really admire have said this is the biggest one that they've ever seen in their lives. And one of them is Sergey Brin, who obviously, yeah, Google founder, and and which was a, itself a magnificent paradigm shift. He said, "Yeah, that, that was a good that was a good try, <laughs> but AI now is the it, it for him, for me, for many other people is the frontier that 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 is where all of those other layers led to, mm. and here we are." What are some examples of those opportunities where you, when you imagine this the, the smartphone, mm. you you had the vision of what we're using today: apps, emojis, connectivity anywhere. Uh, you thought about uh, all of these big tech companies working together the, to create an ecosystem or we could have apps. I mean, those are all concepts that you envisioned decades before they became reality. Yeah. And so let's now ask you the question on what's going to happen in 10, 15, 20 years. Oh, this is fun. This is, this, is, uh, this is where I just love to live, is the idea of pulling from the future that, that is a feasible amazing future and, and coming to it. Now, back then, 1995, when we came up with this smartphone thing, we also came up with something that people don't talk about very much, which is a, a language called a telescope of agents, of mobile agents, 1995. And we had invented them and we built them and we put them in the cloud and they worked. So, so again, AI, one of the places where AI is going is, is, is intelligent agents. That also is an idea that's been around for a long time. Now I think we're ready to actually make it happen. Why is that interesting? Because think of the difference between wealthy people and and the rest of you know the rest of humanity. Wealthy people can afford super high expensive talent, whether it's in medicine or medical health, whether it's in finance or law or or anything like that. Very expensive. And um, and the advice that they get is very valuable. So if you're in agriculture, you can go to the best agricultural source to, to and, and and make a lot of money because you're you're modernizing your entire method of production and distribution. Well, with AI, that's now available for basically for free to everybody in the world. That democratizes democratizes it. It br it brings it it closes the gap between the haves and the have-nots. And the difference between 
in the information age, one of the, the handful of the most disturbing problems is that the gap between the haves and the have-nots has, has gotten wider. Mm -hmm. AI will make it, will bring it together mm -hmm. because people have power. You have a, if you have a smartphone and you know how to use it, the apps on the smartphone in the future will be agents. Hmm. They'll do anything for you that, that you want them to do within limits of technology. That's enormous power in your hand. And I mean, it just blows my mind that you thought of the terminology agents, and we are now revisiting that. Everybody is talking about assistants and agents for right. AI. How does that feel to be this predictor? <laughs> you are the ultimate uh, predictor of the future. Yes, I was born. It's a, I was born with this curse that actually the, those futures are are not abstractions to me. They, they they're pretty tangible. So uh, yeah, that was 1995. Both of the both the person uh, the, the you know the smartphone and agent technology or assistance intelligent assistance was back then so it takes a while it takes a minute now the history of technology is that things that are obvious this is obvious to the agents as much as the, the smartphone things that are obvious take time to happen take more time than people expect this is a kind of a law of of innovation they take a lot more time to actually develop than you than the inventors or the entrepreneurs would think is needed. Mm. However, once they connect, once the, once the, there's a, whatever you want to call it, a, a, a society technology fit or a market product fit, um, it takes off much more rapidly than people expect. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, and that's, and so how it feels is uh, I've learned to be patient. <laughs> if I have an idea, just, you know, hang out for 10, 15, 20 years <laughs> and, and uh, eventually it'll happen. I don't need the credit. I just it's it for it. I just am happy that it's happening because that moves civilization forward. Hmm. So talking about the future, a lot of the audience today uh, is in their twenties and thirties, and they are thinking about their choices in terms of profession, career, studies. Um, where should they be focusing their attention right now? Which sectors? What kind of skills do you think will be most relevant for the AI era? I know Gen Z quite well, and I know millennials very well, uh, and I know Gen Alpha very well, the little ones, because I have little kids. Um, this might surprise you, coming from someone who's, you know, sort of very, you know, wedded to technology in, in a positive way. I think it starts with, with knowledge of self, knowledge of the emotional self, you know, awareness of relationships that we have, and how uh, fragile they can be and to be nurtured. I think it's a, it's awareness of the big social, the megatrends we used to call it, the big social um, and economic and political things, which takes energy. Mm. It takes energy. You can't be inside your little bubble not caring about those things. Mm. But the most important one, I think fundamental most important one is, 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 is being interested in knowing yourself. Your emotions, your feelings, your hopes and aspirations, and how you deal with um, setbacks and frustrations and, and cruelty from others, or whatever it is that, that is a negative, mm -hmm. anticipating and, and, and learning how to be resilient mm -hmm. in the face of that. Now, that may surprise you because it has nothing to do with technology, <laughs> but, but at the end of the day, that's the programming that, that makes us human. Mm -hmm. And if we don't get that programming right, then, then, then what lives on top of it, which is what we do, is is shaky. Mm. Uh, one of my friends is a Buddhist and a psychiatrist and and a, just a really thoughtful guy said, "We're not human doings; we're human beings. It's not what we do that defines us. Mm -hmm. It's who we are as human beings that defines us. And if that foundation is rock solid, which happens in the first small handful of years, mm -hmm. if that foundation is solid. Now you can build on." eventually get to your question which is what should people be focusing gen z's particularly who are, who are now and millennials young millennials who now believe in their soul that their life will not be as good as their parents hmm. which is the first time that's happened can you imagine how frustrating mm -hmm. that is um and and uh, demoralizing that is but before one thinks about that one has to think about this mm -hmm. so that's uh, that's my view on that 
I want to end with your, there's a phrase that you say about the past, the present, and the future. Can we end with that? We can, we can. Um, this is by my life experience. It's probably your life experience, but the past is, can be full of regrets. Decisions not made well, choices not made well, opportunities and regrets. Things have been done to you, things you've done to others, regrets. The future can be, particularly for the Gen Z and millennial, can be, can be full of both hope, but, but anxiety. Hmm. Anxiety and uncertainty. Mm -hmm. So those two things, if you look at the kind of the downside, we have regrets in the past, we have anxiety in the future. The present is a present in English. It's a gift. And it, and it lasts for a very short amount of time. When we started this uh, podcast, those minutes are gone. They cannot be brought back. <laughs> so if those minutes are gone. So if those minutes are a present, then, then the present is a gift. And we have to live in the present, it seems. And gift, truly, it was a gift to have this conversation with you. Um, learn always so much from you. Thank you. Thank you for the gift. Great pleasure to be continued. <laughs> Thanks.